Hi there! I'm SmallAnt1 and welcome to my live split tutorial. I've been seeing a lot of people recently who are just getting into speedrunning and are asking about how to set up a timer to time their runs. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to set up live split and what everything does. There are timestamps in the video description if you want to skip to a particular section, but let's get started. The first thing is that you'll need to download live split. Just click on the first link in the description down below. Once downloaded, You'll have a zip file, which you need to extract to wherever you want to keep the program. Now that you have your live split folder, open it up and find the live split application. You can ignore all the other files. Start up live split and a black window will appear with the timer. The first thing you'll want to set up are splits. So right click on live split and select the edit splits option. A splits editor will appear on your screen. You can fill in the name of the game and the category you'll be running. Next, you'll want to add your splits. Splits are a way of breaking down the game into smaller segments in order to track your progress through the run. I speedrun Super Mario Odyssey, so I'll be making splits for each level in the game by using the insert button on the left and then entering the names of the levels. The names of your splits can be anything you want as long as you can remember what they mean. An optional thing you can also add are icons to each split by double clicking on the icon box beside the name and finding the icon you want. So once you've filled in the game, the category, and splits, you can select OK on the splits editor. You should see that the live split window has changed and is displaying the splits. Now it's time to choose your hotkeys. Right click and select the settings. The first five hotkeys are the ones you'll be using the most during runs. The start slash split hotkey starts your timer and will advance to the next split for each subsequent press. The reset hotkey resets the timer. The undo split hotkey is for undoing a split in the case of an accidental split. The skip split hotkey skips the split that is currently active, which is used when you forget to split at the end of a segment. And the pause button pauses the timer. Set each of these to whatever you want. One last important option is the global hotkeys checkbox. If this box is ticked, then no matter which window is currently active, the hotkeys will register on live split if pressed. This means that you can interact with other windows and the hotkeys will still work properly in live split. So if you set your hotkeys to keys you don't regularly use when typing, it would be a good idea to tick this box, but if you set your hotkeys to more commonly used keys, then leave this box unticked as you may unintentionally use the hotkeys while doing other things. Those are all of the settings you'll need for now, I'll get back to the comparison hotkeys later. So now you have your split set up, but you still need to know what all of the numbers and colors mean when you're in a run. Your first run will have the time from each split on the right and yellow dashes to the left. But on the following runs, now that you have a personal best time, you can start to track the progress of your runs. The right column will still show you the split times as usual, but the other column provides some extra information. If the time in this column for the split is negative and green, then this means that you are ahead of your personal best at that same point in the run by the amount shown. If the number is positive and red, then you are behind your personal best time by that amount. And if the number is yellow, then you golded that split, which means that it is the fastest you have ever completed that segment of the game. And with that much, you can start doing runs already. But live split does look a little bit bland, so now I'll get into editing the layout. Right click and select the edit layout option. The layout editor window will pop up and you can get to making things look real good. Start off by looking at the bottom where you can choose between vertical and horizontal splits. You can also change the default size of your splits. Layout settings is the big one here, but let's look at the side first. The four buttons on the side allow you to add, remove, and rearrange little modules on live split. I'll give a brief explanation of those now. Click the plus button to choose what to add. In the timer menu, there is a detailed timer and a timer. The timer should already be on your layout. It's just a basic timer that begins when you start your run and stops when you finish. The detailed timer gives a bit of extra information. The timer on the top shows the current time for the full run, and the timer below shows the time for the current split. It also can show the comparisons against other split times. By default, it shows the split time in your personal best run of the game, as well as your gold for that split. Most people use the detail timer, so I would suggest adding the detail timer and removing the basic timer by selecting it and clicking the minus button. 
Next, we'll move on to the menu for lists, where you can see splits and subsplits. Splits should already be on the layout, and I've already explained them, so I'll jump to subsplits. Subsplits are a further way of segmenting the game. This is most commonly used for speedruns that are longer and have a lot of parts. Using Super Mario Odyssey as an example, the longer categories such as Darker Side or All Unique Moons spend a significant amount of time in each level of the game, and thus require some extra splits to help you keep track of the progress of the run, and even to help remember the route sometimes. If your run requires subsplits, then they are relatively easy to set up. Once you've added subsplits to the layout, click OK and go to Edit Splits. To group splits together using subsplits, add a dash to each subsplit that you would like to be collapsed within a split, and then, with the last subsplit in that segment, add a name to the split within curly brackets. Here's an example of what this looks like. You can see the final subsplit names the segment Cap Kingdom, and then all of the other subsplits within the Cap Kingdom split are marked with a dash. The next set of modules are in the information menu. Most of these are relatively straightforward. Holding your mouse over the options gives a good enough explanation to understand what they do. The next set are media options. The graph shows a visualization of the progress of your splits over the course of a run. By default, it compares to your personal best time. The sound effects option allows you to choose sounds for when certain events occur, such as when you start a new run, get a new PB, reset the timer, etc. The last option in the media menu is video, which allows you to play a video during your run when the timer is running. This is mostly used for playing a video of your current personal best run, or a run which you're trying to beat. So you can directly see the comparison between the gameplay of the video's run and the current run you're doing. The rest of the modules that can be added to the layout are used less frequently, so I won't be covering those. You can experiment with them if you want. Instead, we'll move on to layout settings. The first tab will be the general layout settings. In this tab, you can choose what you want your background to look like. You can choose from a solid color, color gradient, or an image. If you're planning on live streaming your speedrun attempts and want live split to have a transparent background, I'll be explaining that later. Below the background settings are the font settings for all of the text shown in Live Split, and below that are the colors for the timer as it's running. The Always on Top box on the bottom left is a setting which, when ticked, ensures that Live Split is always visible and on top of other windows when it's running. The Show Best Segments box, when ticked, will make a gold split always have the color you have selected for a best segment. For example, if you're behind in a run and you are 30 seconds slower than your personal best, which is signified by the plus 30 on the splits, if you beat your best time for the next split but are still behind, then if the box is unchecked, it will still be the color set to behind but gaining time. If the box is checked though, then any time you beat one of your gold splits, it will be the color you have set for best segment color. Most of the other tabs for layout settings are fairly self-explanatory, so you should be able to check each of them out to see if you want to change any of the settings for those, but the one layout setting menu I will talk about a little bit are the splits layout settings. At the top of the splits settings, you can choose the background color, which will override the background color of the layout. Next are the total splits displayed. If you have 10 splits but only want to show 5 of them at a time, then you can set this number to 5, and then scroll in live split to see them. When in a run, the timer will auto-scroll through the splits as you progress through them. The upcoming split setting will show a certain amount of splits that are up next. This is only applicable when you have more splits than the total split setting. The six checkboxes below are straightforwards. Each of them do exactly what they say. If you scroll down, there are some extra settings for the columns. Columns are the numbers that are displayed beside the split names. By default, there are two columns, the first displaying delta, which shows how far ahead or behind you are compared to the comparison setting, and then the second column displays the time for each of your splits. These two columns generally display all the information you'll need. Some runners do add an extra column to compare against their best segments as well, although that's more commonly used at a high level when runners are playing incredibly close to their best segments. That covers the most commonly used features of Live Split. There is one feature that's used a little less frequently, but I should still explain it. And that's the different comparisons. Normally, when during a run, you'll want to compare your current pace with your personal best. This is the default setting, but you can change it to have your run be compared to some other things. 
You can have your run compared to your best segments, average segments, or any custom comparison. If you right click on Live Split and click on the Compare Against menu, you can choose what you want your run to be compared to. There are also the hotkeys for switching the comparison to, which are in the settings if you plan on using this feature. To set up a custom comparison, you'll need to open the Splits Editor, click on the Add Comparison button on the left to add a new comparison. You can make this comparison anything you want, but for this example, I'll be comparing against the world record. So once the comparison has been added, you can go to the newly created column and fill in the segment times for the custom comparison. If you have access to the split files of a particular run that you want to compare against, you can also use the Import Comparison button to create a comparison more quickly. With this custom comparison created, you can now switch to it whenever you like. The last thing I want to talk about is how to get a transparent background with LiveSplit. There is no feature within LiveSplit itself to have a transparent background, but using your streaming or recording software, you can do this with a chroma key filter. Nearly everyone uses OBS to record and stream, so I'll be explaining how to do it within OBS. First, have LiveSplit open, and start by ensuring that LiveSplit is a source within OBS by adding a window capture source, and selecting LiveSplit in the drop-down menu, and make sure to uncheck Capture Cursor. Now, you should see LiveSplit in the preview window. Next, you'll need to add a filter, so right-click on the LiveSplit source, and click on Filter. Then go to the bottom left, and click to add a chroma key filter. What chroma key does is it takes a color or a range of colors and makes them transparent in OBS. So you'll need to go over to Live Split, open the layout settings, and change the background color of your splits. For me, I find that this dark magenta color works best, so set your background color to this if you can. If the text or icons in your layout are too similar to this magenta color, then this dark green should work instead. Just keep in mind that the color of anything on your timer shouldn't be too close to the background color or it may appear transparent in OBS after applying the chroma key filter. Back to OBS now, with the chroma key filter added, you'll have to adjust the settings to remove the background from Live Split. Set the key color type to custom, click on select color, then pick screen color and click on the background color of Live Split, then click OK. Set similarity to 75, smoothness to 10, and spill reduction to 100. And then you're set. As long as the live split window and the fonts within it are large enough, then this should give you a clean looking transparent background. With everything set up the way you want it, make sure to right click and save your splits and save your layout so they are preserved for the next time you start up live split again. That's pretty much everything I can think of that's important to know about live split. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If I forgot any details, or if you have any helpful tips, feel free to leave them in the comments as well, they are much appreciated. Thank you for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, I'm SmallNet1, and I'll see you next time.